Hello everybody, Trello here, and today on the Air Superiority Dev Server, we are taking a look at the new top tier British tank, the Challenger 3 prototype, which comes at the end of the Challenger line and comes after the Black Knight and Challenger 2E at battle rating 11.7. And the big change between this and the previous tanks is the addition of this new length 55 120mm gun, the same one as on the Leopard 2 A7V. And like with that tank, this represents a massive increase in firepower, though this is actually more pronounced on the British line than the German line. Basically, this has a lot more penetration than its predecessor, than the A7V does over its predecessor. So there are some downsides. It's got a 7.8 second reload rate instead of 6.5. But you also have a first stage ammo stowage of 15 rounds compared to 4 on the previous tank. And the vertical guidance and targeting speed and two plane gun stabilizer are exactly the same as on the previous tank. And it fires less ammunition types, so you, you haven't got the Hesh round anymore. But like I say, it has a much higher muzzle velocity, so you do get a lot more performance out of these shells. So you've got your Heat FS shell, and you've got a HE timed fuse shell, and you've got your DM33 APFS DS round, and the DM53 APFS DS round. So the DM53 at 500 meters does 640 millimeters penetration. The top tier round on the Challenger 2 Black Knight only does 557mm penetration at that distance, so you've got an additional 83mm of penetration. So that is a massive upgrade, and it's got a much higher muzzle velocity as well. So the old tank does 1650m a second, the Challenger 3 does 1750 so your muzzle velocity is an extra 100m a second faster. So like I say, yeah, this is a substantial upgrade over the previous Challenger 2s. It also comes with a 7.62mm Caraxal machine gun. The gunner has optics of 2x zoom to 10x zoom, and the commander has zoom of 3 times to 10 times zoom. And the gunner, commander, and driver all have access to thermal vision devices, while the tank commander also has access to night vision devices. It comes with a laser warning system and laser range finder, which is very good. You can also fit smoke grenades and a smoke generating system to provide extra concealment. Now moving on to the armour, there is a massive weak spot down here, so only 70mm for the lower hull front plate. So yeah, that is going to be a bit of a weak spot, so you'd probably want to get that behind cover. The rest of the hull does have composite armour. I don't know if it's quite as high as on some other tanks. Like I think the uh, composite armour bit went up to about 500mm on the Leopard 2 A7V. So this seems a little bit weaker than that vehicle. And again, for the mantlet, it only maxes out 200 millimeters. I'm pretty sure on the A7V, it went up to like 400, 600 millimeters. The turret cheeks are very well protected. And then you've got the whole sides. But there is this massive weak spot here where the first stage ammo is. So that's only 20 millimeters RHA armor. And while there is a little bit of internal armor between the engine bay and the crew compartment, it's only five millimeters. So that's not going to be a massive change, I don't think. Although you have also got this... Um, ring of armor which is 38 millimeters thick that could be a little bit more effective but like i say the first stage ammo storage is a bit of a vulnerable area and then just looking at it without the uh, composite armor again here's only 60 millimeters and while there is a little bit of our ha armor behind that that's still not going to provide that much protection in fact if we go to protection analysis let's just say it's being shot at by the t90m yeah, that's a particular weak spot along with the uh, lower hull front plate and also the roof here. So if you fire a HE shell and explode it there, it will just detonate and kill everyone within the turret, most likely. Now against most other rounds, your turret cheeks are going to be mostly well protected, but you can see the rest of the tank just sort of lights up very green very quickly. See here with the anti-tank guided missile and then with the top tier APFS DS round. Yeah, as long as you don't aim for the turret cheeks, you'll be able to knock this out from the front. Then moving on to the speed, it's got a 1,327 horsepower engine, and it's got eight gears going forward for a top speed of 37 miles per hour, and four gears in reverse, so 23.3 miles per hour. Then you've got your free crew in the turret, so you've got your commander who can find the main armament and the gunner on the right, and then your loader on the left, and your driver at the front here behind the composite armor. So again, this seems to be a fairly big step up from the previous Challenger 2s, I mean, the Challenger 3 isn't meant to go into production for a few years, so again, I'm like I've said with previous tanks, I'm not entirely sure how much of these stats are actually known, and it's kind of my main criticism with adding these new ultra-modern tanks. Of course, we can't actually know what the stats are exactly, especially since a lot of them are still, you know, classified, so 
I mean, it's not a bad change, but um, obviously that is one of my big problems with modern tanks. Like I say, it's a massive step up from the Challenger 2. To be honest, I think this, the T90M and the Leopard 2A7V could all probably go up in battle rating, like 12.0, 12.3. I don't think the M1A2 SEP V2 is quite as powerful as these vehicles. I mean, it's basically a regular Abrams with a little bit of armor on the side. But yeah, the British, Russian and German tanks are kind of what I expect from a rank 8 tank. But we'll just have to see how it performs in the game when it's released on the main server. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you'll join me for the next one. I've been Toreno, and I'll see you next time.